Hello, my storytime friends. This is Miss Bree coming to you from the Westford Public Library in Westford, Vermont. I am so happy that you could join us for another virtual storytime, and I look forward to talking all about birds today. So, did you know that February is National Bird Feeder Month? Who knew? Well, now you know. Um, and so we are going to talk about birds today and then our curbside craft is a fun uh, bird feeder project that you could do at home. So let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully everyone brought their hands today. You did? Good, good. We're going to sing, open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, put them in your lap. Creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them right up to your chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Did anyone get in? Hmm. Maybe you could pretend to be a bird and do the same song as uh, with um, beak hands, like open, shut them like that. I don't know, it's kind of fun. Okay, so we are gonna start our bird theme stories today with a poem about a bird. And we have a great book of bird poems called Today at the Bluebird Cafe. Um, it's poems by Deborah Rudell and illustrated by Joan Rankin. Um, so all different kinds of birds represented here, but I thought I would read a poem about one of my favorite it's, a favorite, it's one of my favorite birds, but it's pretty common everywhere in the United States, and that is the robin. And I'm gonna read you this poem, There's a Robin in My Bathroom. He sings in the shower and bathes in the sink. He lounges in bubbles to help himself think. He leaves little footprints on top of my soap I'd like to go in, but I'm giving up hope. He uses my toothbrush to scour his wings. He sloshes and splashes on all of our things. He sprinkles himself with my mother's cologne. He asks me politely to leave him alone. What would you do if you found a bird in your bathroom giving himself a bath with your toothbrush. Oh my goodness, hopefully that's not happened to you. Um, but that was a great poem from Today at the Bluebird Cafe and there's lots of other poems in here. So if you liked that or if you like animal poetry in general, you should put some, ask your family to put some in your curbside order. Okay, now on to our stories. So I told you that we're talking about birds and bird feeders today. And does anything else like to visit your bird feeders besides birds? Sometimes you can get a bear or a raccoon visiting your bird feeders, but usually you see another animal trying to get at your bird feeder. Let's see, they're gray kind of fluffy, have a long fluffy tail. Can you guess what I'm talking about? You're right, squirrels. Squirrels like to visit bird feeders and today we're going to read Those Darn Squirrels by Adam Rubin and the illustrations are by Daniel, Daniel Samari. Um, Those Darn Squirrels is we have three of them here at the library. There's different versions. And also this group, uh, Ruben and Salmary, have written um, Secret Pizza Party, uh, Dragon's Love Tacos, Robo Sauce, like all kinds of good books. So I hope that you enjoy those darn squirrels. And you should say that every time you see them at your bird feeder. Those darn squirrels! <laughs> Okay, those darn squirrels. I like the beginning pages. They don't really have any words, but we can see the squirrel tails sneaking out. 
And then we can also learn that someone likes to paint birds. On the outskirts of town, at the edge of the forest, there was a little old house. The only thing older than the little old house was the old man who lived in it. Old man who choir. Old man Fuquire was so old that when he sneezed, dust came out. He was also a grump. He didn't like pie. He didn't like puppies. The only thing he liked was birds. All summer long, the old man painted pictures of the birds that visited his backyard. There were whirly birds and bongo birds, baba birds and yaba birds, even a rare flugel bird came by once or twice. Fuquire's paintings weren't very good, but the birds never said anything. When the air turned crisp and the leaves began to change color, the old man grew sad. He knew that soon the birds would fly south for the winter as they did every year and they would be lonely. Then he had an idea. If he fed the birds, maybe they would stick around. So old man Fuquire built beautiful bird feeders and put them all around his backyard. He filled the feeders with delicious seeds and berries and soon birds came from all over the forest just to eat in the old man's yard. But the birds weren't the only ones who liked the bird feeders. The squirrels did too. Not many people know this, but squirrels are the cleverest of all woodland creatures. In fact, they're fuzzy little geniuses. They can make a house out of a tree, a bed out of a bunch of leaves, and a box kite out of twigs, dirt, and squirrel spit. They are also excellent at math. Winter was fast approaching and the squirrels needed to gather as much food as they could to get ready. So they decided to take some food, take some of the bird food. The birds were not happy. Neither was old man Fuquire. When he discovered what had happened, he shook his old man fist and yelled, Those darn squirrels! Let me hear you say that. Those darn squirrels. You got it. He filled up the feeders again, but this time hung them from the clothesline. He went back inside confident that the squirrels would no longer be able to get to the seeds and berries. But the squirrels were determined. They devised a plan and this time they took all the food from the bird feeders. This is a good engineering book too. They used all their weight to weigh down that tree. The birds were furious. Humph, 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 yelled the bongo bird. Those darn squirrels, yelled old man Fuquire. Yum, said the squirrels. Oh, they look really full. Now it was old man Fuquire's turn to devise a plan. He went to the general store to get supplies. He bought lasers and clamps. He bought wires and springs. He bought all sorts of tools and built a veritable fortress around his bird feeders. Then he refilled them very carefully. Na, 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 na snorted the flugel bird. I'd like to go to his general store that sells lasers. What about you? The squirrels stayed up all night working out their strategy. They drank cherry cola and ate salt and vinegar chips to help them stay awake. Finally, they had it, the perfect plan. They put on their tiny helmets and prepared to launch themselves into the air over the fence, between the lasers, and on to the bird feeders. 
Oh, I love that they drew up a plan. I hope it works. Or maybe not. Who are we rooting for, the birds or the squirrels? The first squirrel misfired and hit a tree. The second squirrel went too far and landed in a bucket. The third squirrel sailed clear over the house. The birds laughed and laughed. They each had one last delicious mouthful of seed and berries from the old man's feeders. And then they flew south for the winter, just as they did every year, said the flugel bird. After the birds left, Old Man Fookwire was lonely, just as he was every year. He fixed himself some cottage cheese and pepper, his favorite snack, but was still lonely. When he looked out the window, the squirrels could tell that he wasn't happy. Go away, shouted the old man. I don't like you squirrels. The squirrels held a meeting deep inside a large tree. They decided to give the old man a present to make up for taking the seeds and berries. Now, not many people know this, but squirrels are not only fuzzy little geniuses, they also collect just about anything they find on the ground. These squirrels had a vast stockpile of spectacular junk to choose from. What would old man Fookwire like? Bottle caps? Popsicle sticks? Postage stamps? Finally, they had it. The perfect gift. Oh, look at all some that stuff they have. I wonder what they're going to pick. The squirrels stacked all of their loose change on Old Man Fookwire's steps. There were dimes and pennies. There were nickels and quarters. There were even a few tokens from Coco's Arcade. It all added up to $47.36, plus a few rounds of skee-ball. Maybe you squirrels aren't so bad, Fookwire said when he found the coins, but I still like the birds better. Then he gave, this gave the squirrels another idea. They raided their junk again and got to work. When old man, when old man Fookwire woke up the next morning, he was amazed to see that the birds had returned. I wonder if they really returned. <gasps> but wait, those things weren't birds, they were squirrels in disguise. Great googly moogly, said old man Fookwire. This will make quite a painting. He ran outside and took down the lasers and the wires and the spring-loaded trapeze, and he turned all the bird feeders into squirrel feeders. Then he painted till his brush ran out of bristles. Look at that, they dressed up like birds. The squirrels were so overjoyed, they had a party in Old Man Fookwire's house. Those darn squirrels, said Fookwire, and he shook his old man fist and smiled. So if you enjoy those darn squirrels, we also have those darn squirrels fly south and those darn squirrels and the cat next door. So um, you can order any of those up in your uh, curbside craft order. Okay, I want to show you what um, our curbside craft is this week. So who knows what this is? Pine cone, that's right. This is a pine cone. Oh, it's a little sticky. And what you're going to get for your craft is you're going to get a bag of bird seed, a string, and a pine cone. And um, what the hope is, is that you would take this pine cone and you would cover it with something like peanut butter all over there. Now, not every family can use peanut butter, so maybe you have sun butter or you can even use, um, you can use like Crisco, like oil or grease, um, like solid stuff, lard, um, bacon drippings, um, 
I've even seen people do this with, with like cream cheese um, or something, but that might get a little gross. So um, anything like peanut butter, almond butter, uh, any kind of sun butter, nut butter that you have, or um, anything like fatty, like Crisco, lard, um, birds like that kind of stuff too, bacon drippings. So you're gonna cover this with something sticky and you're gonna take your bird seed and you can just put this into your bag and kind of toss it around to coat it or you can dump your bird seed out on a plate and roll and cram and smoosh the bird seed all over your pine cone and then you can tie your string on there and you can hang it from a tree if you'd like birds to get it you can do that if you'd like squirrels to feed off of your pine cone uh, you can put it on the ground on a rock even just kind of in a branch um, the hungry animals who are around will find it. And you can do this also if you run out of pine cones or you don't have the opportunity to pick one up this week. You can do this with frozen bagels or just regular bagels that have kind of gone bad. Maybe they got a little mold on them. You can cover that with bird seed. Um, you could do it with pancakes that are left over. Um, any kind of like bread product that you could smoosh some seeds and peanut butter on would be great. Um, you can also do it on cardboard, um, but you know, you don't want your birds eating too much cardboard. So um, I encourage you to pick up some supplies to feed the birds this month or get creative and feed the birds your own way at home. Okay, so we have a couple more stories, but before we do that, I feel like zooming to the moon. What about you guys? Okay, oh, get ready. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one, a blast off! <laughs> I love blasting off with you guys. Okay, we are going to read another book about another kind of bird. And this bird finds a way to eat bugs and larvae, which are like bug babies, um, that are in wood. Hmm. So this type of bird pecks at wood to get the bugs that are under it. Does anyone know what kind of bird I'm talking about? You are right, it's a woodpecker. And we have lots of great books about uh, woodpeckers, but I really like this book, Peck, 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 by Lucy Cousins. And Lucy Cousins writes all of the Maisie books. So um, she's already number one in my book uh, for writing those Maisie books, because I love those. But she also writes some other books, and this is one I really like, Peck, Peck, Peck. I also like this book because look, it has like actual holes in it, which is kind of fun. I love it when um, authors and illustrators are creative in using the book as kind of a cool thing. So like I can see through this. <laughs> peck, Peck, Peck by Lucy Cousins. Today my daddy said to me, it's time you learn to peck a tree. Now hold on tight, that's very good. Then peck, 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 peck the wood. Peck, 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 oh look you be. I've pecked a hole right through the tree. Let's see, you can see the hole. Darling, you're such a clever bird. That hole you've pecked is so superb. Now off you go, my little one. Practice hard and have some fun. That sounds like good advice, right? Nothing's gonna go wrong. So I f off I flew, I couldn't wait, across the grass and onto the gate. Peck, peck, peck. Do you think there are bugs in that gate? Why would the woodpecker be pecking that? Now I'll peck this big blue door, then go inside and peck some more. Peck, peck, peck. The door, oh no. I don't think he learned his lesson. 
I peck the hat, I peck the mat, I peck the tennis racket and the jacket. Oh my goodness. I peck, peck, peck a magazine, a picture of Aunt Geraldine, an armchair, a teddy bear, and a book called Jane Eyre. Oh no, look at all these holes he's putting. I peck the shirt, I peck the skirt, some slipper socks, and polka dots. Oh no, look at all the stuff he's packed. <gasps> Even the underpants. Oh my goodness. I peck the soap, the blue shampoo, I peck the sink, and the toilet too. Oh. Any book I can say the word toilet and underpants in is considered a win. <laughs> I peck, peck, peck an eggplant, a tangerine, a butter dish, a nectarine, a green bean, a sardine, and 17 jelly beans. Peck, 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 peck. Oh my goodness. I peck and peck and peck and peck. I peck, 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 peck. Until there's nothing left to peck. Oh no, look at that laundry room. I've pecked and pecked. I've been so busy, but now I'm tired and rather dizzy. I think I'll fly back to my nest, find my dad, and have a rest. Oh, Daddy, I've had so much fun. You should see the holes I've done. I absolutely love to peck. I love, 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 love to peck. That's fantastic, Daddy said. Now it's time you went to bed. Good night. Sleep tight. I love you. I love, 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 love you. Kiss, kiss, kiss. And that's Peck, Peck, Peck by Lucy Cousins. A really, really fun story. I have one more great book about birds, but I want to point out oof, a couple of great selections about books that we have. We have a young birder's guide, so if you want to go out and look at birds and then figure out what kind of birds they are, we have this young birder's guide. We also have adult versions of this as well, although this one is pretty comprehensive and great and small enough to stick in your backpack if you're out exploring. We have a great new board book about birds, um, so if you have a young bird lover in your life, they might love these beautiful pictures about all kinds of birds. Maybe you're in kindergarten through fourth grade and you want to read the current Red Clover book, Hummingbird by Nicola Davies, which is all about hummingbirds. And one of my favorite books, again about one of my favorite birds, is Robins, How They Grow Up by Eileen Cristolo. And then we have some other great books. We have Woodpecker Wham, all about woodpeckers. And we have Circle about these amazing birds. I have to look up what they're called. Again, they're shorebirds and they're godwits. And they fly um, from Australia, New Zealand, all the way up to Alaska every year. They stop over in China. And it says here that in their life, they fly further than the distance from the earth to the moon. Amazing. So we have lots of other great stories like those darn squirrels that involve birds. And I hope that you check out some great bird books at the Westford Public Library. So we have one more story for you. And this is a Max story. Max is this cute little black kitten. Uh, these books are by Ed Veer. And Max has lots of adventures with the moon and going to bed and just being himself, but this one is Max and Bird. This is Max. Max is a kitten. Kittens chase birds. This is Bird. Bird is a bird. Birds get chased by kittens. Hello, Bird, said Max. Let's be friends. Yes, please, said Bird. First, I will chase you, said Max, and then maybe I'll eat you up. You look like a tasty snack. I don't like being chased, said Bird. 
and I'm far too young to be a tasty snack. I haven't even learned to fly yet. Oh, said Max, but it's a rule of nature. Birds get chased by kittens. But friends don't eat each other, said Bird. Hmm, said Max. We need to think about this. Max and Bird sat and thought a while. Hold on, said Bird, I have an idea. Bird explained the principles of friendship to Max. Friends have fun together and help each other out. If you teach me to fly, said Bird, then we'll talk about the chasing and the other stuff, okay? That, said Max, is a very fair plan. They shook on the deal. Max explained the principles of flight to Bird. Well, Bird, first of all, you, um, what you do is, well, <clears throat> coughed Max, I don't think I know how to fly either. Follow me, said Bird, we'll go to the library. Libraries know everything. It's my favorite page of the book. <laughs> In the library, there was a section on flying. Max and Bird couldn't reach the books on the top shelf, so they borrowed some from the bottom. Max and Bird studied for weeks. They read important books until their tiny brains were full. But to cut a long story short, you just need to, one, concentrate hard, two, stick out your wings, Three, flap, piece of cake. Can you guys try that? Concentrate hard, stick out your wings and flap. Did anyone fly? I think there might be more to it than that. Max and Bird concentrated hard. They stuck out their wings and they flapped. Nothing happened. They flapped in the morning, they flapped in the afternoon, they flapped in the evening, zilch. No flying. Max and Bird were tired out. All night long they slept and all night long they dreamed of flying. The next day was with heads full of dreams Max and Bird tried again. They flapped and they flapped until they ached. Nothing happened. Bird flipped, Bird stamped, Bird yelled. No fun, I'm bored, bored, bored. Flapping isn't working out. Calm down, said Max. We'll ask someone who can fly. They'll tell us what to do. Max and Bird asked Pigeon, very politely. Excuse us, could you please tell us how to fly? Please? Ha 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 ha, Pigeon cackled rudely. You don't even know how to fly? It's so easy. Just stick out your wings and flap. Look, Pigeon flapped. Pigeon flew upside down. Pigeon zigs. Pigeon zagged. Pigeon looped the loop. Pigeon was showing off. With iron resolve, Max and Bird tried once more. They flapped and they flapped and they flapped. And at 5.23 p.m. precisely, something incredible happened. It was wobbly, but Bird took off for one, two, three whole seconds. Yay. Hooray! We did it! Thanks for teaching me to fly, said Bird. That's what friends are for, said Max. Well, a deal's a deal, said Bird. I suppose you want to eat me up now. Oh, said Max. A, a tasty snack. Oh. I'd forgotten about that. Let me think. Do you think he's gonna eat them? 
Max thought for quite a while, it says here, he's making a chart, it says eating birds, pros, tasty, cons, no friend. I don't want to eat you up, said Max. It's not what friends do. But can I watch you fly instead, Bird? Yes, said Bird. And he did his first loop the loop. And what did he make? A heart. Because we love our friends. The end. And that is Max and Bird. And if you enjoyed that, there are several more Max books for you to check out from the library. So this is Miss Bree from the Westford Public Library saying to you guys, have a great week and I will see you next week. Bye.